Hello beautiful peoples of the internet. In this video I would like to talk about something that has been a lot on my mind lately. And that is the decision between Mac or Windows. What is the better choice? Here is the way I'm planning to approach this. So I will address certain stereotypes and tell you what decision they should make in my opinion. I'm by the way not very biased, I don't think so because I've seriously looked at Apple products even though I have finally landed on a Windows PC. And we'll get into why I have chosen that option in my case. Yes, there are some people that are just straight up Apple fans or Windows fans, but I'm not one of those. To me, they really both have their place and their strengths. And that are some of the things that I'm gonna address in this video. While talking about this subject, we will be working on my new system. So let's get into it. The first category of people are people who are doing what I would call light work. So think about writing, browsing, and at the most, maybe some photo editing. In that case, I would recommend a laptop. It should probably be around a thousand bucks and I'll get back to that in a second. But first off, why a laptop? Well, this is because a laptop is something you can take with you. Whoa, never thought about that. Some older people will probably say, but desktops are faster, right? Well, not necessarily anymore. I mean, in the past they were, but at this point in time, the same laptop for the same price is just as fast. So why wouldn't you go for the free portability? And if you want to work from home, from your desk, you still can. The second remark probably again all people will make is, well, with a desktop I have a bigger screen. Well, that is something that is not exclusive to desktops because you can attach a big screen like I have behind me to a laptop. You don't need a desktop for that. And if you want to go anywhere else, you can just unplug it and go wherever you want. So let's get to the specifics of one of these laptops. Let's first get some requirements out of the way. You should get at least 500 gigabits of storage. Any less than this, you will regret it. And you should at least get eight gigs of RAM and maybe 16. When it comes to MacBooks, it is very easy because the only option is the MacBook Air. And you can choose between the 13 inch and the 15 inch. Personally, my favorite size for a laptop that you actually want to take with you is a 14 inch. So that is right in between. You need to decide for yourself, do I want a little bit of a smaller laptop or a bigger one. A smaller one is just easier to take with you. A bigger one is usually nicer to work on. If you have a big screen that you are gonna use at home with it anyways, I would say get the 13 inch because it is really small to take with you and doesn't take up much room in your bag. But when you use it at home, it doesn't really matter what the size is because you are using your dedicated monitor. So over to the laptop side, those storage specs still apply, but it gets a lot more complicated because there are a lot more choices. And because this video is pretty general, I'm just gonna put a few links to some options in the description. I would just recommend to get anything above 700 euros. If you go below that, you're probably gonna sacrifice some battery life or some performance that you really need to the point that it gets annoying. And I would go as high as 1300 euros. That is quite enough for those kind of tasks. Now let's quickly get back to Apple versus Windows here because I've given you two options which are both well pretty capable for those certain tasks in my opinion and to be honest I don't think it really matters. Windows laptops can be a little bit less expensive which is nice if you really don't have that much money and Apple laptops are just very stable all around. The battery life will be good and it will be plenty fast. So the decision between those two should probably come down to preferences between Windows and macOS and the fact that you have either a Android phone or a iPhone. I really don't think that there is a clear winner here and that it is just a preference. So with that said, let's go to the second category, which actually has a pretty clear preference. Next up are PC nerds. And I'm allowed to call them nerds because I'm one of them. With PC nerds, I mean those people who like to build their own PCs. What the fuck? Holy shit. If you're not one of them, the first question that might come up in your head is why would you want to build your own PC? Well, no one knows. It is just something that certain people enjoy. And the decision in this case will be pretty easy. And that is for the simple reason that you cannot do any customizing on a MacBook. Well, there is that like old and 
not very good one, but that is not really a good option. So if you're a PC builder and you probably like to put a whole lot of lights in your PC and over your whole setup, you should probably just go with Windows or maybe Linux but well, the hardware is still the same. This is a pretty obvious one, I think. The next category seems just as obvious, but it is not necessarily. Because the next type of people I want to talk about are gamers. And gamers sometimes want to build their own PCs, but they don't necessarily have to. Because gaming means to game, and gaming can be done on a laptop, and even on a MacBook if you want to. But it's no secret that MacBooks and Mac OS is, well, pretty terrible for games. The performance will just be pretty bad compared to everything Windows will offer on a system that is like half the price. So if you really want to, you can go for Apple if you want a game, but I'm just gonna say that you should choose Windows. It is the better choice. Well, now we still have the decision left between a desktop and a laptop. When it comes to high performance, if you spec a desktop the same as a laptop, the desktop will be a little bit better. This usually has something to do with cooling. What you obviously gain with a laptop is that you can take it with you. This is obviously a very big advantage if you live in multiple places, for instance. An annoying detail that I should point out is that Windows laptops offer a lot less performance if they are not plugged in. So if they're just running on their battery, it seems to only give you like 60% of the actual performance. There is a simple reason for that, and that is because they're not actually that efficient. Not nearly as efficient as MacBooks. Because of this, if you would run them all out, they would probably drain their own battery in like an hour. You can actually change in the settings how heavily the performance is impacted by it being plugged in or not, but you can't actually turn it off completely. At, at least I have not seen it yet. So you should think of a gaming laptop more as a desktop that you can take with you, but you still kind of use it as a desktop because you're usually plugged in when you're using it. And that brings me to my next category, which also has something to do with Windows laptops. And this is on the go productivity. So specifically people that don't work from home usually and need to do well somewhat heavy tasks on the go. So in this case, you can choose between a Windows laptop or a MacBook. This is where the whole plugged in battery connected issue becomes more annoying. Because if you, for instance, go to a coffee shop and sit down with your MacBook, you can just go to work and it will probably be fine. But a Windows laptop well, you will need to find a socket somewhere. You need to take the cable with you in the first place and it is quite a hassle. This is what I've been doing with my laptop. It really annoyed me and is one of the reasons that I have seriously been looking into MacBooks. Within this category, there is another sort of category and this I would call busy people. Because their time is pretty valuable, they probably earn quite a bit of money. If you are this type of person, just buy a MacBook. Why? Well, it is stable. The battery life will easily get you through the day. It will run nearly every task without breaking a sweat. Video editing, for instance, will be fine. Most 3D work will be fine as well. It is outrageously expensive, especially if you get a MacBook Pro, but it will just work. This is one of those rare cases where money can actually solve a problem. Many of you probably already expected that MacBooks would run all of these things pretty good because that is how good their reputation is. When anyone seems to think about video editing, they seem to think about a MacBook. If you benchmark it, PC parts are still superior, even in video editing. The problem with those just is that they are a lot less efficient and optimized. If you care a little bit more about your money and you work in one place, then you should get a desktop especially when it comes to 3D work. A 3090 that I have upgraded to today is faster than the M2 Max from Apple when it comes to programs like Blender, Unreal Engine, and most of the 3D software out there. It is just overall a better deal when it comes to what you pay for the amount of performance that you get. And that sort of brings me to my decision because, well, I've already told you, I have put a 3090 in my PC and there are several reasons for that and I'll go over them now. First off, I don't have endless money so this just saves me a whole lot of it. This is however different for someone like me who already had a PC. 
because if you don't already, you will need to build or buy it completely from scratch. You would need to buy the case CPU, motherboard, RAM, cooler. But in my case, I could just buy the 3090 and a new power supply, drop it in and it costed me around 800 euros. And the alternative that I was looking at was a 4000 euro macbook which is 3200 euros more so it's saving me a lot of money the next thing is that it is very good as i just told you for 3d stuff and surprise surprise i'm actually planning to get into a lot of 3d stuff with game development and modeling the next thing and another sort of category that i've not yet talked about is special use i'm actually getting a little bit into stable diffusion which is AI that you run on your own system. Well, technically it is not AI, it is deep learning, but it is sort of similar to DALI or Midjourney. I got very inspired by Corridor Digital. So if you're interested in any stable diffusion stuff, look on their website and on their YouTube channel. The thing with these special users is that they just need certain software. Say for instance, that you're developing a app for macOS. It would make no sense if you made that on a Windows machine. In this case, with Stable Diffusion, the fact just is that everyone in the community uses Windows and dedicated graphics. So I could make the rogue decision and try it on macOS, but it would just have a much higher chance of failure. So if I can avoid that, I will. So if you're doing any program slash app development or work with any experimental software, you probably know best what kind of system you need. And I'm therefore not gonna tell you what to do. I am not a Windows or PC Master Race fanboy. I'm really not. I still do work on the go and I have a laptop for that, which I don't like very much. I seriously looked into MacBook because I really liked the idea of having one machine that I can use for everything and can take with me. Right now I'm gonna use this PC to do the bulk of my work because it is pretty powerful. But I also need to work on the go sometimes. And then I'm gonna use my other laptop, which is fine, I guess. It is a pretty high performance laptop, so the battery is, well, kinda terrible. It is very clunky. It is 15 inch, way too big in my opinion. And just the fact that you're working on two machines with separate storage, it sometimes is a bit of a hurdle. Even if you sync both systems on one drive, it can be a bit of a frustrating process sometimes. There are two options for the future that I'm considering. I'm still really into the idea of getting a very powerful MacBook and doing everything on there. Any experimental stuff with stable diffusion, I can still do on this PC. Another option is getting a MacBook Air to use for simple tasks on the go. Because most of the things that I do on my laptop are things like photo editing, writing, and a little bit of video editing. I really don't see myself doing any 3D work on the go. So for those on the go tasks, a MacBook Air would probably be just fine. Hopefully all of my rambling has helped you make your own choice. <laughs> With that said, this is the end of the video. I would like to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh.